It looks like we're ready to go. Welcome, everybody, to challenge number five of the Back to School, Back to Scrapping 2012 Fall Organization Challenge. And we're going to build on what we talked about last week, photo organization, adding in those components of memorabilia, journaling notes, and then how to kind of put everything together into a holding album so you can actually be really productive when you have time um, to actually craft. So let's start with this week's winner. So this week's winner is Sandra Hartung, who has a new mantra, think color, think theme, soon your room will be a dream. Very nice, easy, I love it, simple, and she has sorted a gazillion brads and eyelets. Um, so good job, Sandra. Thank you so much for participating, and watch for your email for that $25 gift certificate. Don't hear from Joanna right away. You can feel free to email us at customer service at the scraprack.com and we will get your gift certificate out to you. So let's start with our goals for the webinar. Um, our goal is to make it easy to find your journaling notes and memorabilia. Uh, we're going to talk about adding journaling notes and memorabilia to digital photos and then learning to create a holding album for maximum efficiency when you're actually ready to do some crafting. So step one is the same as step one in almost every one of the webinars. It's probably getting kind of boring, but you've got to gather all that stuff together. And this is half the battle with things like memorabilia, is just finding it all and bringing it all together in one place so that you can start sorting and organizing those things together. Um, you're going to need a good way to store your memorabilia, so file folders, oversized manila envelopes, a flat 12 by 12 boxes that you've emptied out during this process might work great. Um, if you're a digital gal or, or guy, I don't know if there's any guys on the line with us today, but um, you can scan it and add that, those images to your digital um, photo files if you're going to do it all digitally. Step three is to sort and label. So depending on what type of, of system you chose, whether it's mill envelope or the file folders, you're going to want to label those. And just like labeling everything else, I'm going to caution you to use sticky notes in the beginning and wait until the very end um, before you start putting permanent labels on anything. You're going to sort them. Um, uh, you're, so add labels to your file folders, mill envelopes, plastic box, and put them in chronological order. You're going to sort memorabilia into those containers by event include info like event name, date, location of pictures. So we talked about that with the pictures. Um, on, the, on the memorabilia, you want to include a note about where those pictures are located. The same way with your pictures, you're going to want to include a note about where the memorabilia is located. And the same with journaling notes. And then, of course, you want to file or store those things chronologically. So you can actually use the, um, you can actually use the sorting templates that you used in the process of doing your photo sort, if you want the sorting template method to kind of coordinate things by stacks. If you made that timeline as you were sorting your photos, the timeline is really going to help you go back to where certain things belong um, chronologically as well. Essentially, the goal is to get that memorabilia into the chronological order and labeled the same way as you labeled your photos, and then you can go back to the photo box that you created when you have the memorabilia and label, you know, the little note card on the photo box or on the photo file or piece of paper, whatever you chose to wrap those pictures in with where the memorabilia is and then also on the, on the file folder or envelope or box or whatever you have the memorabilia in, put it up about where those pictures are. And then once you do those steps, essentially that sorting process, then you're going to be able to create a holding album for projects that you're working on. Um, and a holding album really makes it efficient to work on projects because you're able to put your photos, your memorabilia, and your journaling notes all together. You're able to group your photos by layout. If you've gone through the process of choosing, as we talked about last week, um, the number of photos that are going to go on a page and the number of layouts you're going to do for that event, creating a holding album is going to be really easy for you to do. And it's going to make it really easy whether you're cropping at home or going to a cropper class or girlfriend's house or whatever it is. Um, for those of you who go on vacations or go to, you may, you may have a vacation home or whatever, and you're going for a week or so and you want to do a little bit of scrapbooking while you're there, a holding album is really going to make it simple for you to do that. I did a blog post. Um, not that long ago, about a trip we took to Moab, Utah, for summer, I uh, set myself up to scrap the trip while I was on the trip. Um, so if you haven't checked out that blog post, I'll send out a link to it. 
but um, it, the ideas would be the same um, even if you were setting up a whole holding album and um, let me just I'm going to write a little note to myself here about what to include in the email. Um, but I'll include a link to that. You want to set yourself up the same way, even if you're going, you know, away for the weekend to your family home or visit friends or whatever, but you think you're going to um, crop or scrap while you're there, setting up this holding album is going to make it easy for you to do that. So a holding album is going to provide a place for everything you need in one easy-to-access book. So for those of you who have taken a live class, you've seen that I have two holding albums at the live class. One of them is, eight, is an 8.5 by 11 just notebook, and then the other one is this 12 by 12 format that you're looking at in the picture here. So when I first started scrapbooking, I used that 8.5 by 11 format because I scrapbook Creative Memories 8.5 by 11 albums. And when I moved up to 12 by 12 albums, I created a 12 by 12 holding album as well. So, um, so you can see that on the left side, I've used the Perfect 6 storage page. Um, and the perfect six will hold multiple pictures in each pocket. So each, each, like the top row, the middle row, and the bottom row, each of those represents a double page layout, left side, right side. So each of those pocket's is going to have six pictures in it. And that's how they're grouped together for that left side, right side layout. So I've got three double page spreads laid out, designed out for this Mesa Verde trip that I have right here. And all the memorabilia is with it in the pocket obviously, that says Mesa Verde. So um, this particular album that I did was with, I'm sorry, let me just go back a second here. So these, this was a road trip that we took um, from Seattle down the coast of California, looped around through Arizona, and came back through the Grand Canyon and stuff. So there was a lot of things that happened on that trip. So I created this um, guide. This is just one of the pages of it for each segment of the trip and who, was, who I was going to scrapbook what for. I know that sounds a little bit confusing. But what this did was give me a way to set up that holding album. Now, you can do the same thing, putting a, just a guide, just a notepad or a piece of note paper in the front of your holding album. So if you're just doing a chronological year of your family, you know, you can write the things in based on the timeline. I hope that makes sense. But this was a trip that was set from start to finish. And so this is the first page of the different um, stops that we made. And so I knew what I was going to scrapbook about and how many pages I was going to do of that for my album and for London's album and Max's album. And then I had a place, also a column, where I could put where the memorabilia and journaling notes were. Now, in this particular situation, they were all included in the holding album. So I was able to lay out what I was going to do for each um, thing. So you can see the family album on the top, London's album in the middle, and then Max's album at the bottom. But there's just some little notes in there just on scraps of paper, things that would normally end up in the recycle bin or the garbage bin, um, where I've got those pictures laid out. And I know how many layouts I'm going to do and what they are and which album they're going to go in. So it just makes it really easy to set up that holding album um, to function really well. Now. The other thing um, about a holding album is, um, well, let me let me do this slide first. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. So um, now, one of our gals, Jill Cooper, who may be with us today or may not, she took the challenge a couple of challenges ago, and she set up some templates for um, sort of laying out your pages within the holding album, so you could really plan it out well. So I'm going to go to the website and show you where that is. So let's just click in here, and um, we're going to go to Back to School, Back to Scrapping, where all our information for this webinar, challenges stored, and then right underneath um, the, where the video will belong from today's class, you can see there's two um, things that say Jill's template in PDF form, click here, or Jill's template in Word, click here. So if you click on that PDF, it'll, it takes just a second to download. But she created this little grid for laying things out. So she could do a little sketch here of, um, of each of her layouts and then check underneath did she have the photos, the memorabilia, what paper, embellishments, journaling notes. So she used this grid with her holding album to mark off that everything was in there. So this is a great tool to use for planning, especially if you're not going to be at home while you're crafting. So you can 
choose your photo, your memorabilia, any special embellishments, your journaling notes, or special paper to go along with whatever you're doing. And that's just downloadable um, right from the website, right, right off that, our regular page today. So it's an easy way to keep the ideas with your photos. And the check boxes make it really simple to remember exactly where you are in the process or what you might still need to do in that process. Now, one of the great things about using a holding album is that it actually gives you a place to put things as well. So if you come home with memorabilia from a particular event at your kid's school, an award ceremony, or the Christmas program, or whatever, if you're keeping a holding album and things in chronological order, it's easy to slip that um, piece of memorabilia right in chronologically where it's going to belong in that holding album. So it does make it really simple to keep things together as new memorabilia or new pieces of information, or maybe you've scribbled a little journaling note on a piece of paper or something that you want to remember, it gives you a place to put that. So keep that in mind, whether you're putting it into the, a particular holding album in chronological order or setting yourself up with a file folder in your desk where as you bring something new home, you can put it right away into chronological order. But the goal really is to set yourself up for that easy success of I have something, I know where it goes, which means it's going to go in the right place the first time, you're not going to actually have to spend, you know, put it in the junk drawer in the kitchen or put it on the refrigerator or move it around from your desk to your handbag, wherever it goes. Um, I do this whole thing about the lifestyle of memorabilia, I mean the lifestyle, um, the life cycle of memorabilia, how it goes, you know, it's in your hand at the event and then it's in your pocket and then it's in the side pocket door of the driver's side door of your car and then it's on the dashboard and then it's on the refrigerator and then it's in the junk drawer. And so, and you don't see it again until you've finished up whatever you thought you were going to use it on. So then you have to go back and recreate another page or add it to a page that you've already done. So having a place to put it, being able to keep it in chronological order is really important. So the same thing with your digital photos. If you have digital photos from a particular event and you know where the memorabilia is, you're going to want to go in and just make a note in that file folder. Whether you create a whole Word document in there and put, you know, in that Word doc, the memorabilia for this event is located in the file cabinet, and then the journaling notes below that or anything else that you need. I'm also going to um, encourage you, if you do buy something special that you think you're going to use for this particular thing, um, if it's something that you would only use for this particular event or whatever, then it can go right in with your photos and your memorabilia and your holding album. But if it's something that you just think you want to use, it's not particular to that, Put a note that says, hey, don't forget you have this really cool, I don't know, trophy embellishment or something if you're doing a sports page so that it just sort of prompts your memory when you're, um, when you're actually ready to create. Now, I talked about doing, um, these are just some pockets of memorabilia, this the double extra long, but um, this, these are special products for SeaWorld, right? So I don't need to put them in my four section system because I'm only going to use them with the SeaWorld pictures. They say SeaWorld all over them. When I'm done with them, if there's anything left, it's all going to go in my perch box, OK? So um, I can comfortably put this in with the SeaWorld pictures, because I know it's only going to get used with the SeaWorld pictures. I'm not going to miss using it on something else. So if it was just water, I wouldn't put it in there, because water is going to go in beach pages or boating pages or you know, some other pages, and I don't want to miss using that for something else. But this particular thing, this SeaWorld product, I bought specifically for the SeaWorld pictures. When I'm done with the SeaWorld pictures, I'm going to be comfortable to purge that, those products out of the mix as well. I hope that makes sense. So setting up your holding album, I use sticky notes to tag each of the sections in the holding album. Now, you can tag, I use dividers for each major category. Um, I use sticky notes because they're easy to peel off and throw away. But you can, you know, type a new label with your label maker and put it on your dividers every time you redo it. Um, my sort of mantra is keeping it simple. The less stuff I have to find, the less stuff I have to dig out, i.e. the label maker, the more likely I am to do it right the first time. And that's why I use sticky notes because they're always handy and they're super easy. But you can do whatever, whichever way you want. But labeling those sections then makes it easy to work within a section or to go, if you know you're going to work on those pictures from the Grand Canyon, you can flip directly to the Grand Canyon 
and you don't get sidetracked looking at everything else. It's kind of that same philosophy we talked about with putting the photos in the boxes with that piece of paper or using the photo files so that you go into the photo box and you pull out only what you want and it's easy to do it. You don't get distracted by all those other files that are in there. So this is the same thing. If I'm going to work on Grand Canyon, I can flip right to Grand Canyon and I don't end up flipping through the Disney pictures or looking at the SeaWorld memorabilia or whatever it else, whatever else it is. So the, the more you can focus what you're doing, um, the easier it's going to be when you're actually in the process. Uh, put your chart in the front binder. So we talked about this kind of in the beginning. So I have this little guide in the front that tells me how many pages I'm going to do for each thing, and I can X, just put a big red X through them as I complete those pages so that I know that they're done. The other nice thing about a holding album is, let's use the Disney um, example here. If I had completed the Disney pictures, if I had that X through all three, the four, the two, and the two, then I would know I'd completed all the Disney layouts that I needed to do from this trip. And anything that was left over in the Disney pockets, I would know that was memorabilia related. I would know that I could comfortably throw away. One of the reasons we don't throw away things is because we're worried that we might need them later. So if you can build in some reassurances to yourself that you're done with those pictures, you're not going to need the memorabilia, then it makes it a lot easier emotionally for us to let go of those things. So there's a lot of benefits to using the holding album. Obviously, there's the ease of access. You're not going to no duplication of handling material. So once you you sort them, you put them into the holding album, and they're ready to go. You're not going through multiple steps to sort, organize, store those pictures, and then pull them out and then resort them. Um, it's easy to go to a crop. It's perfect for shopping. Um, with, for coordinating products. So if I was going to work on those Grand Canyon pictures, I could take my holding album in a travel pack, go to the scrapbook store, and I would have the pictures, the number of pictures, the number of layouts, the basic color group that I wanted to use. So at the scrapbook store, I could buy the right number of background papers and the, and the right colors and the right number of mounting papers and maybe the right embellishments if that's what I was after. So um, from that perspective, um, being able to take those things with you when you shop is going to ensure that you buy the right amount of things, not too many, not too much, and in the right colors. And then once you buy those things, you can put them right together in that holding album and go home and, and work on them. So it makes it simple. Um, also, if you do multiple albums, which we I did a post about last week, you don't have to uh, rely on your memory for whether or not you've got those things done. So a few little things to prep yourself up and set yourself up is going to make it a lot easier to actually get um, scrapbooking done and to feel comfortable that you've done everything that you wanted to do. All right, so this week's challenge is to sort your memorabilia into filing or storage system, label the memorabilia with the location of the coordinating pictures and journaling notes, um, create an online journal on your desktop so you can easily add to it. If you use a smartphone, include the journal in your sync function so you can add notes using your phone. So one of the things when we talk, talk about journaling is um, everybody loves to read everybody else's journaling. When you get, <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I get a magazine, I have a little magnifying glass even on my desk, I love to read people's journaling notes and their layouts. I love to read that story. Yet I find as I travel all around teaching classes that the vast majority of us are not good journalers. And I think the reason that we're not good journalers is because it's too hard to find the journaling notes or we didn't write it down at the time. We can't remember who's in the picture. We're not sure what the date is. And we have these good intentions of going back, getting the information, and filling it in. And then it just never happens. Well, one thing that makes it really simple to keep information together is to start, just get a Word document, open it on your desk as a journal, and then every day or every couple of days, just put the date in and some keywords and a little bit of whatever story happened that day that you might have taken pictures of. And then the nice thing about a Word document is you can search just by particular keywords. So if it's swimming class that you're journaling about, if you just go to the search box on that document and type in swimming class, it'll bring up everywhere in your journal that you mentioned that. So it makes it easy to find those journaling notes. Having it on your computer and syncing it to your phone um, makes it easy when you're sitting at swimming class to make a quick note or when something funny happens with your kids you can make a quick note on your phone and then sync it to your journal at home. So really maximizing sort of the benefits of technology is really helpful. 
So uh, then I want you to start a holding album for your next or current scrapping project. So whether you're using, you know, the Scrap Rack Perfect Six Pages and the Double X, like I showed in my examples, or you're using an 8.5 by 11 um, notebook with just um, page protectors in it to kind of organize those pictures and memorabilia and journaling notes all together, either thing will work. You might even also just be using a file folder to build that holding album. But your goal is to, um, for whatever project you're working on now, or your next project, to start lining that up so it's ready to go when you have some time to work on it. Then I want you to sort one container of other stuff. So I know there's lots of you still struggling with stickers and embellishments and things that are kind of spread around. So one container, whether it's a shoe box or a refrigerator box, I don't care. Just take one, one container and sort that out. And then four inches of paper. So if you still haven't finished your paper sorting, um, go ahead and do that. And then post your progress on Facebook. And I, I wanted to share something else with you. I, I wish I would have um, copied it and printed it um, on the, the uh, webinar today. But one of the posts that I got, and I'm sorry, I apologize. I don't even remember your name. You might be part of the group. And if so, today you can type in the question box and let me know too. But one gal sent in that she, her friend inherited a second home, and they were turning that second home into their own little scrap house. And so they had spent all, she had spent the weekend teaching her friends the four section system so that they could all be organized the same way so that when they scrapped it together, all their stuff was organized so all of them could find it. And I just was so excited about that because I know as crafters we love to share our stuff. We love to be able to find it quickly and easily when a friend says, do you have this or what, do we have that? You can just get to it. So. Um, I'm, again, I apologize for not bringing it up because I would love to recognize you by name and maybe I will on our Facebook group. But I just thank you for sharing that story with me. And it is true that if you have friends who need to get organized and they're using the same system that you are, if you do like to scrap together, it makes it easy to share those materials that you've got. So, okay, so those are our goals for this week or this week's challenge. And just this is just a quickly a reminder because we do get the questions throughout most of the webinars. Um, that you can get all the information and the recorded version of today's class um, at the Back to School, Back to Scrapping, Get Organized Challenge button on our website. So just, and that's kind of, that's where I went before. I did put the link into the PDF just prior to the class today. I'm sorry, I meant to do it last week and I forgot, but they are up there and then the video will be posted um, up there as well once it downloads this morning or this afternoon. So. With that, I'm going to bounce into the question and answer segment here. So let's see here. Uh, Betty Lynn commenting, I did complete my photo challenge. Great job, Betty. Great to hear from you, too. Melanie says, I found manila file folders with multiple pockets at an office supply store. So um, a great idea, those file folders that have multiple pockets. And when you find something wonderful like that, I don't know, Melanie, if you are actually a part of the Facebook group. But for those of you who are participating in the Facebook group, anytime you come across something that's really cool and you find it useful, um, one of the great things about the Facebook group is that um, if you have a problem, somebody else probably has the same problem. So if you um, can post up a solution or a link to that solution on the Facebook group, then you're going to be helping someone else as well. Uh, Burl says, how did you decide the number of layouts? Um, I just decide the number of layouts based on what I think is reasonable that other people would want to look at. So I used the example, I think, last week of Max eating chocolate ice cream. And because I had a digital camera and taking pictures is free and he was adorable and chocolate ice cream was all over his face and in his hair and dripping down the front of his clothes, um, I tried 650 pictures of that. But when I went to scrap those pictures, the truth is I'm the only one who wants to look at 250 pictures of Max. And um, so when I look at pictures, I think, how long am I going to be able to capture the interest of somebody else who's looking at this? How long is it going to take me to tell this story? And then I decide. So I might say, and here, the other thing is, um, I try not to overdo because, <laughs> this sounds horrible, but um, when I die, I'm going to be handing these books off to somebody else. And I had a situation where, and someone I know who just has one child um, had done literally dozens of scrapbooks. And the child said, 
to the mother, those are really great, and I think they're really cool, but I do not want dozens of scrapbooks when you go. And it was kind of a wake up to me, um, you know, it was hard for the mother who has now channeled her energy and she now makes lots of mini books and she does lots of gift stuff and um, she does some, a lot of digital so that it can be online so people can have lots and lots of pages. So there's some other ways if you really like to create to do the creation and make it valuable. But in thinking about that, when I'm ready to hand off the, this history book of my life and my kid's life, what is realistic for somebody else to want? And so that's really the biggest thing when, I, when I'm creating family albums is who, who's gonna, how, how many albums are my children really going to want to inherit or my daughters-in-law or whatever. So I try to keep the story um, short and interesting for the reader and also keep it realistic for whoever might inherit. So sorry, that was kind of a long-winded answer, wasn't it? All right, so Melanie says, I often make gift albums for weddings and baby gifts and leave them blank for the recipient to add photos. I've made sketches of the page ideas and stored them together in a ring-bound index card stack from the office supply store. Each album ideas are in individual index cards. So that's a great way um, to go, especially if you like to repeat something that's been successful to you. So Melanie, if you can take some pictures of that and post it up, that's something I'm sure that gals on Facebook would love to see more of. Marion says, do you know any good sites for journaling prompts? I never know how to get started with my journaling. Um, you know, I kept, <laughs> I have a digital, I think I showed it in the digital organization, organization webinar, um, but I just Google search journaling ideas, and you're going to find tons of them in tons of different styles, and then I kept them all in a one notebook. So when I need some kind of motivation to write, and they, they're, they're, there are all different ones. There are all different kinds of styles. There's ones about improving the way you write, and then there are ones about tricks for, like, you know, how the ABCs of, you know, a day in my life, or the one, two, threes, or the top tens, or those kind of things. And once you start reading those kind of prompts, it makes it easy for you to do a little bit every day. So especially something like top three things that happened today. And even if all you do is include the date and some bullet points, maybe with names of the people that were there, um, it really does. It's amazing. And, but writing is one of those things that the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. Um, so you know, if you're frustrated initially with, with how your journaling's going or, or the quality of it or the depth of it or whatever it is, um, just keep in mind that writing is something that requires a lot of practice, like anything. I mean, some things come naturally to people, but for most of us, the reason we don't journal is because writing's hard. So the more you practice it, and so if you can use something, some little trick, like I'm going to just write the top three things that happened today, you'll find that as you evolve as a writer, it gets easier. But just Google journaling ideas. And you'll find that there's tons of stuff on the website, on the internet, tons of websites and things that are going to fit you particularly. And like I said, things about improving your writing or shortcuts to writing or just as you set some prompts to get you going. Kelly says, when are you going to do this series again? I have decided to just listen this go round just to overwhelm with the senior that graduates this year and he is going to Ireland. Plus I have two other kids that keep me busy right now. So I want to be able to try this again. Or will these videos always be available? I can come back and listen anytime. So oh, the answer is yes in both counts. Um, we do, we'll do another challenge series this winter. So um, the winter challenge series is usually a little bit shorter because we are so busy with holidays. So there'll be a winter challenge that's kind of a short series. And then we start again in January with the um, Resolve to Get Organized Challenge. So they're going to come back up. The old uh, videos usually stay on the website until the new videos Start so that you can, there's consistently something out there that you can watch. So the information is always out there. It does tend to be more motivational for people to actually come to class on, on Tuesdays or whatever, Wednesday nights or whatever it is that we have it scheduled for um, and actually sort of be involved with it live. But the recorded videos are always there and you're always welcome to rejoin. We have lots of alumni who've been through the sessions multiple times because we've accumulated stuff. I mean, some people, 10, 20 years of scrapbooking accumulated, so it takes more than eight weeks to get through it all. So please feel free to join us. 
um, how, as often as you like. Laura says, can the photo boxes be stacked on top of each other? Um, yes and no. I guess it just depends how heavily loaded you have them. They're a little bit taller than a regular photo storage box and, and a little bit bigger as well so that you can put uh, memorabilia in on top or underneath or whatever so there's a little bit of extra room in there for things that are kind of bulky if you're trying to store things together. Um, I don't have any of mine stacked up, but I don't see why you couldn't stack them once the lids were on them. Um, Libby says, hi Libby, good to see you pop up today. I've ordered four of the photo file boxes, can't wait for them to arrive. Hope you won't think of me as a stalker, but I showed my husband the photo of your scrap room. He must have seen the longing in my face. Last night he came home with a table exactly like yours, what a sweet man, and a new office chair. I can't wait to get it all set up this evening so I can do my next post. Yay, give your husband a big kiss for all of us. We can all appreciate a good man. Burl says, the CK Journaler sidekick is helpful as well. So I'll send that out. It's called CK Journaler Sidekick. Now, I can't put links up here when I do this little send to all thing. I hope it shows up for you guys. Um, but again, if you have a great idea, feel free to post it up on the Facebook page and share it with everyone there as well. Melanie says, uh, I'll ask my son to post them in Facebook group. I personally don't do Facebook. Sorry, I've had too many people try to coerce me into Facebooking, and nothing turns me off to something faster than trying to force me into it. Uh, I laugh out loud. I know I missed out on a lot of neat stuff, but I'm stubborn. That's okay. Life is overwhelming. A couple of friends who, because of their job, they can't have social media. Um, and so they have to sort of lurk through their husband's pages or whatever. So if your son doesn't mind joining our group, and every once in a while you could lurk into his page and see what's going on. You don't actually have to post to benefit from it or let anybody know that you're there. So. Shauna says, how many photo file folders will fit in one box? It just depends on how, um, I'm going to pull my box down right now, on how many photos you have in your box. So I would say, um, or how many photos you have in each file, obviously. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You can do 20 photos, 20 files in there with probably what I would consider a reasonable amount of photos in each um, box. So it'll hold quite a bit. Um, Melanie says, I ordered uh, I ordered photo boxes yesterday. I can't wait to get them. Um, oh, Burl says the uh, CK Journaler Sidekick is software. So that's nice, especially if you could get it on your um, phone. I might have to. I'm going to write that down. Maybe I'll put a link to it, CK Journaler. Sidekick. Maybe I'll get a link to it in the follow-up email that goes out this afternoon or tomorrow. So, so it looks like that's the end of the questions for today. Um, so I'm going to turn you all loose. This has been kind of a shorty webinar. So that maybe I'll give you some extra time to get started, I hope. Um, so don't forget to post up your progress posts. We love them. And also, if you're sending a progress post to the customer service um, at the scraprack.com, some of them are really interesting and fun, and I would love to post them up to our Facebook group. So even, I don't have to put your name on it or anything, but if you don't mind me posting the, the general information group, um, if you can put a little note, feel free to post on Facebook, then we can get those up on the Facebook pages and for other people to read. So especially for those of you who mentioned different problems that you solved or whatever in the progress post, and some of them are really funny. And uh, funny is always good for keeping people motivated. So feel, um, if you can leave a note that says feel free to post on Facebook or post on Facebook, don't use my name or whatever so we know what we can do or can't do, that would be great. So I guess that's it, group. Thank you so much for spending your Tuesday morning with me. And I will um, tune in to you next Tuesday. And I'm anxious to read those posts next Monday night telling you that you all got your work done. So. Um, Lois says, how do you get to Facebook? So I will take a quick um, two. I'm assuming that you mean how do you get to the Facebook group. So um, just go back to that same page, right? The, right here, the 2012 Back to School, Back to Scrapping, Get Organized Challenge. And then you scroll about halfway down the page, and it says the word Facebook.
second in red, and then it says join our Denver Facebook group. Click here, and you that link, and that will take you into Facebook and into the Get Organized Challenge group, and then you just have to um, sign up. So, so if you're not a part of it, if you're not a part of the group, um, you just ask to join, and then um, Joanna goes on every day, or I'll be, or I'm on there every day, and so you're you're going to be a lot of access pretty quickly. There's no big secret to it or anything like that. So, um, but it's super simple, and you'll see a page that looks just like this, and that's us. Um, so I guess that's it, ladies. Have a wonderful week, and I will talk to you next Tuesday.